Hi, in this uh, tutorial we will install an ASP.NET web application in a virtual test environment. So the contents of this uh, tutorial, we have an existing ASP.NET web application which we have created in Visual Studio and in C Sharp and that application communicates with an SQL Server database and the application has so-called uh, CRUD functionality, it inserts data it retrieves data, it um, updates data and delete data in the SQL Server database. And we want to test that application in a virtual test environment. And we will use uh, VirtualBox uh, software. And uh, when you have installed um, the VirtualBox environment, you will install uh, the Windows 10 or 11 in a virtual machine. Uh, and we, we, in order to install Windows 10 or 11 in a virtual environment, we need to, to download and use a Windows 10 or 11 ISO file. Then, when we have in, uh, set up our environment, our virtual environment, we will uh, deploy our ASP.NET web, web application to that virtual machine. So our test environment shall uh, simulate the final production environment so we are not going to install Visual Studio in that environment, but we choose to install a local SQL Server Express uh, database uh, in this case. In addition, we need to install and configure a web server. In our case, we will use the Microsoft Internet Information Services, shortened IIS. This web server is part of Windows, but you just need to activate it. In order to use also ASP.NET web um, core applications in IIS, we also need to install an additional package called .NET Core Hosting Bundle. So that's the different steps that we are going to, to, to execute in this tutorial. So here you see uh, the application, the web application that we are going to deploy to our virtual test environment. So this is an ASP.NET uh, web application. So let's just run the application. Quite simple application, it is a startup page, and then here, if I click books, you will get a list of uh, books that are stored in the database in the SQL Server database. So, now where there are three different books in the database, I can click new book, book in order to create a new book that are stored in the database. I can click on the link in order to edit an existing book, or I can click on this link in order to delete an existing book. So Basically, this simple application has the necessary CRUD functionality. You retrieve data from the database. You can insert new data. You can delete data or update existing data. Here you see my local SQL Server database. And here I have the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And I have this books uh, database. I have, in this case, four different tables. I have one view three store procedures and all these um, uh, views, store procedures, tables, etc. are stored uh, locally on my hard drive. So I have a, uh, each of these files I have stored locally on uh, my hard drive. So here in the tables uh, folder I have the table script which you see here. This table script inserts all the necessary tables into the database and then similarly we have tables for um, functions. In this case, there are no functions, but we have uh, views, stored procedures. I also have some um, script, some insert some data into these tables. So every time I, let's say, I want to update a stored procedure, I just go to um, select the proper stored procedure and then make the necessary changes and just click the execute button in order to insert that stored procedure into the database. But by having all uh, these files here uh, locally in a structured way, um, like this, then you can easily update uh, your database, either it's locally or you can update a test environment, production environment, etc. I also have created a um, application that are merging all these files into one single SQL file that contains all the, um, the queries for inserting tables, views, stored procedures, uh, etc. And that we will use and then we will use that script 
then we are going to create um, our SQL Server database in the um, test environment that we are going to create. Also, it's important that we store the connection string to the database in a file called upsettings.json. So if I open this one, here is the connection string to my uh, local SQL Server database. So here you have the server name, name of the database, uh, etc. Um, and by putting the connection string in this um, configuration file, we can easily change uh, the connection string and update it so it fits the, the test environment. So then let's start set up this uh, test, this virtual test environment. So the first thing we need to do is this uh, virtual software, virtualization software called um, VirtualBox. So and then just Google it, open the web page. And then I can just download and then select uh, the proper operating system. I have a Windows and then the file are downloaded to my um, hard drive. And then I can just open the file and install uh, the VirtualBox uh, software on my computer. So uh, now I have installed um, uh, the virtual uh, box software and it looks like this. So next now is to set up and create a virtual machine. Basically I just um, go to machine here, click new and then specify a name. It could be um, test environment or whatever. And next you also need that so-called ISO file. And that ISO file you will find on the internet. So if I just go to my web browser, search for um, Windows 11 ISO file, click on this link, and then here download Windows 11 disk image ISO file. Then I just select this one and just click download now. And then I will install the necessary Windows 11 installation file. So then here on my local hard drive, I have uh, this ISO file downloaded, Windows 11, uh, etc. Dot ISO file. So then I just select this ISO image here when setting up a new virtual machine. So then just select this proper folder. And then uh, basically you just um, basically just use this default uh, setup. So then make sure to specify a name, specify the location of the ISO file, then just click finish in order to set up a virtual machine uh, for your Windows 11 uh, test environment. So now we have installed Windows 11 in a, as a virtual machine uh, using this virtual box um, virtualization software. So then I can just start my Windows here by clicking the start button. So now we have started up Windows 11 as a virtual mas machine uh, running here inside this uh, window. Next thing we need to make sure is correct. Click on devices and make sure to insert this guest additions CD image. Uh, that's important. And when you click on this link, you just go to the um, file explorer in your virtual machine. And then go to find this CD drive here. And then just click on the necessary installation file. Uh, if you have an ordinary Intel um, computer, just uh, select this one in order to install these um, additional tools that you need to install in order to make sure that your virtual machine works as expected. 
typically this package also makes sure that you can uh, uh, resize your window uh, like this. If you haven't installed this package, this resizing will not uh, work properly. Next thing you need to make sure is to uh, use drag and drop and then by default it's disabled but typically we need to copy some file from our host uh, window to this uh, virtual machine called guest. So either choose host to guest or just select bi-directional bi -directional. then you can copy files uh, both ways. Typically, you should also install all the necessary updates for your Windows. So just go to the file menu, click on settings, and go to Windows update and make sure that um, your Windows is up to date. Typically, when you install from an ISO file, you will get a list of lots of updates that you need to install in order to make sure that your Windows is up to date. Next, you should also go to um, uh, settings and uh, apps and make sure to uninstall all necess unnecessary apps typically by default windows includes lots of apps that you don't need so then basically just make sure that you uh, remove uh, all unnecessary apps like uh, outlook i will not need that in my test environment and there may be also lots of other apps that you don't need so just make sure to uninstall everything and then you have a clean windows um, and then next you typically should um, create a, a snapshot then by just clicking um, a machine take snapshot and then specify a name for it typically uh, type a name uh, clean window 11 or something and then you can go back to this clean setup of your uh, virtual machine. So uh, now before you start uh, deploying and install your uh, ASP.NET web application, you typically need to install some software on your virtual machine. So uh, you need to install, in our case, a local SQL Server Express uh, database. You need to install or activate the Internet Information Services, or shorten IIS. That's the web service, oh, sorry, the web server that will host your ASP.NET web application. And in order to host ASP.NET web application in this IIS uh, web server, you also need to download and install a package called .NET Core Hosting Bundle. So let's start installing this uh, software. So we start by downloading and install SQL Server Express in our virtual machine. So then I just um, Google SQL Server and then just SQL Server downloads. And then our, there are different versions of SQL Server. Um, I just use this uh, free version called SQL Server Express. So download now. And then this um, package I've downloaded to my hardware and then just click open, click yes, wait a few seconds, so I typically just select custom, select the location and just use the default one, click install, wait a few seconds. Then this uh, Windows uh, pops up, so then I just select New SQL Server Standalone Installation. Then this Windows pops up, I just ac accept the license terms, click Next. Basically I just uh, more or less use the default installation. Check for updates, it's always good. Then just click Next. This Azure extension I don't need, so I just remove it, click Next. Here I typically need to install this database engine services. I don't typically need this machine learning, etc. So I can just remove that part. Click uh, Next. 
then here you name it. I just typically just use the name instance SQL Express. So of course, you can use whatever name you like here. Click next. Here are, are some services that SQL Server is using. I just set everybody to um, automatic. This one cannot be changed. Click next. Here you typically want to not only use Windows authentication but so called mixed mode, and then you can choose between using SQL Server authentication or Windows authentication. So make sure to use this one. And here you need to specify a proper password for your SI user or your system administrator. So just type a proper password here. So when you have, uh, select mix mode, a, pa a password for this SI user, click next. And then the installation of SQL Server is starting. So then finally, SQL Server is finished with the installation. Then I just click close. Next, I also want to install the SQL Server Management Studio. So then I just select install SQL Server Management Studio tools here then you are directed to a web page where you can download this uh, SQL Server Management Studio just click on this link and the file will be downloaded and then you can install it then I just click open file on this SQL Server Management Studio setup file I just use the default location and click install, click yes, and then this SQL Server Management Studio will be installed. So now the installation of SQL Server Management Studio is finished, so I just need to restart my computer. And then just wait a few seconds. So then SQL Server Management Studio are installed and should be working properly, but just just open it and make sure we are able to connect to the database. So then here's our server name, which you need to remember later when we are going to update the connection string in app settings. I prefer to use um, So I uh, prefer to use SQL Server Authentication, then I just um, enter the password for the SA user that he was entering during the setup. And typically also need to remember it uh, for later use. Then I, here in this case I just click remember here. Encryption, I can make optional. Trust Server Certificate, I click connect in order to connect to the database. Let's see if we get some error. Let's just try once more. Connect to the database, the SQL Server authentication and the password. And make sure I've written the correct password. Like this, and then click connect. And now we are able to connect. And then we have connected to this um, SQL Server database that our installed in the virtual machine and now we are ready to start installing uh, the next software which is the uh, web server internet information services so uh, next let's uh, install the web server that we need uh, the internet information services shorten iis um, Typically, we don't need to download the software, we just uh, need to activate it. So then we go to um, go to the start menu, search for um, Windows features, and then we find this one, turn Windows features on or off, and then we just select that one. And then we get a list of packages that we can install or activate on our computer. And in this case, we need to search for internet information services so then we just basically click this one and then you can install more or less of these sub packages but i just use the default one 
So I just select Internet Information Services, click on that one, and then it's selected the default sub packages, and then just click OK in order to install or activate uh, the, the IIS um, uh, package. So when it's finished, just click close, and then now you should have this uh, IIS installed on your computer, and then you can open this a package uh, on a software called IIS uh, Internet Information Service Manager. So that's the um, software that you uh, use in order to configure uh, the web server and set up your web applications, etc. So then by default, you have a default web page here. And then later, we will just right click here in order to add our application. So now we should have Internet Information Services installed and uh, next we need to have this additional package called the uh, uh, .NET Core Hosting Bundle. This is a package that you need in order to host ASP.NET web uh, applications on this internet information service. So then I just go to my web browser and then I just search for this um, .NET core hosting bundle, I find it here in the list and then install the .NET core hosting bundle and then here is some information about this package current version .NET hosting bundle installer so then just click this on and then it's uh, downloading to your computer and then I just click on this uh, .NET hosting uh, bundle package, click open, and then agree, install, click yes, and then let just this package be installed on the computer, and then after that your internet information services, the web server that you need in order to run your web applications should be up and running. So now this package is installed, click just close, and now your virtual machine should be up and running. It has a SQL Server uh, installed, it has this Internet Information Services installed. Next we need to prepare our application and install it on this virtual machine. So now I'm back on my host computer, I have, as mentioned earlier, this uh, SQL Server up and running with my database and my tables, stored procedures, views, etc. And I here on my local hard drive have the different files located in this uh, structure. I have tables, views, stored procedures, etc. and all these files should now uh, be installed on the virtual machine and then I have created a final script that where I have merged all these files into one, um, one SQL script it looks like this so this basically merges all the scripts that are in these subfolders so here I am creating the tables here I create the view store procedures and finally I also insert some uh, default data into my database. So in order to create this final SQL script, I can, um, of course you can just copy paste into a new file, but I have also made uh, an application called database script app, which I will show you. So let's just open this application. So this is a simple application, you can download and use it for free, or you can create your own. So here you see the <coughs> graphical user interface, so let's just uh, run the application. <coughs> so here in the root folder, I just select my root folder, so how it here under development, Visual studio, database app and this ASP.NET CRUD application here I have my database folder SQL so I just select this folder and then just click create and then 
all these files that are located in this root folder will be merged into one new SQL file and then I can just click save and then just save it on my hard drive like this. And then we can use this SQL script later to install all our tables, views, store procedures, etc. etc. in this virtual uh, test environment. So then we are back in the virtual environment. Here we want to install or create or set up our database. So then I just start by just creating a folder here where we can put all our um, files and um, etc. that we will copy from the our computer, the host computer, to this uh, guest computer or virtual environment. I just call it software or something. Software. And then we have, have here on my local computer this SQL script. In order to copy, we have to make sure that devices drag and drop and either host to guest is um, selected or bi-directional. So then I can basically just drag and drop this file to the guest environment or this virtual machine. And then I can open my SQL Server Management Studio, start by just creating a new database. Select the proper name, I just use books, which is the same name as my development computer, click add. And then this books database has been created. And now I want, just want to install this uh, SQL script, which I have copied here. And just drag it in like this. And then you see this script contains all the necessary uh, stuff like tables, use, store procedures, etc. So then I basically just click execute. And then just right click here and refresh. And then you see the necessary tables has been created. The view store procedure etc. So now our database is up and running. So let's install the web application itself. So now I'm back in Visual Studio on my local computer and my ASP.NET web application. So let's just run to make sure it works as expected on my development computer. And it seems to work fine like this. So now next we need to create a deployment package. So basically we just click on the project, in this case book app, right click, select publish. And then here we have different options. You may use different types here, but I just choose to use the folder publish. Select a proper folder. So I just have here under my um, applications, I have created a deployment folder like this. Select this one, click finish and click close. And basically now you can just pub click publish here and then uh, the necessary file will be copied to that uh, deployment folder. And that's it. Then I can just leave Visual Studio, go to the de deployment folder and look inside. And then you see here the necessary files that we need in order to run our application in the test environment has been copied. So this book app Excel, this is the main application and book app DLL. Here we have the app settings.json where we store the connection string, uh, etc. So basically I just now go to my virtual test environment. Here in this software folder, of course you can put it wherever you like. And then basically I just copy that folder to the virtual environment, uh, like this. So next we now typically go into this app settings.json to set up uh, the connection string. So then we just need to make sure to make the necessary changes. Data source is the name of your SQL Server. In my case, if I go to SQL Server Management Studio, you find the name here. 
So that's the name of your SQL server. Which you put here you're under data source, like this. And then during the installation of the SQL Server Express, you need to select a mixed mode and an SA password. So then here is the user, SA user, and the password for that SA user. I'm just using a dummy password. Of course, you need to make a proper password for your SA user. You can also create another user instead of the SA user that is specific only for your database. And the name of the database, in my case, is uh, books. So then I should have my connection string uh, up and running. Then I just save this file. And now we need to go to this um, Internet Information Services Manager here on the default web page. So I just use this uh, default, uh, this, this setup by the system, default website, or you can also go right click here and add your own website. But Basically, just use the default website. It's the simplest uh, way. So then I just right click on default website, select add application. So we are going to add our web application. Then I just select the proper uh, default. Uh, that's OK. And here, physical path. I just need to find our application, which was stored in a folder called software. And then we have this book up here. Click OK. And also, you need an alias for your application. And since I have named my application book up, I also use book up as an alias. And basically, that's it. So just click OK. And then you see it's created here under the default website. Basically, you now I can just right click on it, manage application, and click browse. And basically now our application should be up and running. Typically takes some time, yeah, but you see here, this is our front page. We have just some basic information about our book application. And then hopefully now when I click on books, I will also be able to uh, retrieve data from the database. So you see here now I'm retrieving data from the database. I can also add new data, edit data. So let's just see introduction to linear algebra 2. And then you see it is updated. I can also delete. And also let's create a new book called just um, sp.net or something with an ISP number, a publisher, an author. Um, data or something, click save, and then you see the data has been stored in the database. And you can also double check it by going to this um, SQL Server Management Studio, right click on books, and then just um, so you can just open this um, book table. Right click on it and then just select top thousand rows or something. And then you see this new book, ASP.NET, has been created and this introduction to linear algebra has also been updated. You can also try to delete book. So let's just delete this book that we just created and just execute once more. And then you see the uh, application works as expected. We are able to open the web application, we are able to see the data that are stored in the, this now new database here in the virtual environment. And this application works as expected. We are able to retrieve, update, delete, or create new data in our application. Finally, you can create a shortcut or something. So then next time you don't need to go into the Internet Information Services Manager, right click on the application and Manage application and click Browse. So then we don't need to use this anymore. We can just create a shortcut here in our web browser, uh, like add it to the favorite or something. Book up and uh, done. And then you find it here. So then basically I can just download, uh, remove this one and just open the shortcut.
uh, from here. I can also create a shortcut here on the desktop if I if you want to, and just select new shortcut. And then type the location, then just this one, click next, and name, book app, click finish, and then you also have a shortcut here on the desktop. Basically, then you can just close down the web browser, and then just double click on this shortcut, and then your application is up and running. So basically that's all. So now we have our web application up and running in this virtual test environment. So let's summarize the diff different steps that we needed to take. Um, so we wanted to create and test our ASP.NET web application. Um, we, uh, on our local computer on Visual Studio, we tested it and was making sure that the connection string was put in the app settings.json configuration file. Then we downloaded and installed this VirtualBox software. And inside VirtualBox, we created a virtual machine using this uh, VirtualBox virtualization software. We installed Windows 11 in our case. And after that, we installed a local SQL Server Express in the virtual machine. Then we needed to install the necessary web server. In our case, we used this internet information services. Uh, we just turn it on or install it via this Windows feature uh, in Windows. After that, we needed to install this .NET Core web .NET Core hosting bundle in order to run ASP.NET Core web applications inside IIS. Then we made an SQL script for our database. We used a basic application called Database Script Apt in order to generate such a script. Then we installed that script in our database that was stored in the virtual machine. Then finally, we was publishing uh, an app development package for our application. Then we just copied that folder or package to the virtual machine. And then we made sure that the connection string was updated according to the new database that we had in our virtual environment. Then we install the web app using this IIS manager. And finally, we just um, open it, the application, the web application from this IIS manager, and it was working. And finally, we also created a short shortcut on our uh, desktop and a shortcut in our web uh, browser. So that's all. So good luck setting up your own virtual uh, test environment. Thank you and goodbye.